All right, joining us now to discuss the January 6th investigation is Jamil Jaffer, founder and executive director of the National Security Institute and former White House counsel to President George W. Bush. Jamil, thank you as always for being here. Really appreciate your time on this weekend. Uh, let's just get right to the big picture. What is your main takeaway or prevailing thought from uh, the House Committee's investigation that wrapped up this week? Well, Lindsay, obviously a big deal that the House Committee has chosen to recommend to the Justice Department that President be Trump, uh, President Trump be criminally charged in a number of uh, variety in a variety of ways, including uh, you know Congress uh, in obstructing Congress's official action um, and essentially uh, stoking uh, the insurrection that took place, or at least giving aid and comfort uh, to those who engage that insurrection. These are a big deal uh, for Congress to claim the president was involved with. Um, and now what we'll see is what the Justice Department does with those referrals and what it does politically to the president. Obviously, the former president as he is running now again for the Republican nomination in 2024. So you're, you're also former counsel to the Assistant Attorney General for National Security at the Justice Department. So looking ahead now, how much do you think the committee's criminal referrals and this final report ultimately matter to the DOJ special counsel investigation? Well, obviously, the Attorney General has decided to take this out of the hands of the career prosecutors at DOJ and put them in the hands of a special counsel to insulate essentially uh, any question the Justice Department might be involved politically in this matter. I think it's going to be hard, though, ultimately, for the Justice Department to uh, claim a lack of political influence because we're in the middle of a of an election season or coming up to an election season. And so it'll be hard, Justice Department trying hard to avoid that claim, uh, but it'll be hard to do, particularly because a lot of what took place took place in the context of a prior election and an election contest at least claimed by the former president of the United States. So, you know, the hard question for DOJ is, do you pursue these claims in the heat of an upcoming election, even with a special counsel uh, being named uh, to, to conduct this investigation. So I think a lot of people are just kind of thinking, let's wrap this up. So how quickly do you actually see things going uh, with the, the DOJ investigation once it does kind of feel like it's picking up speed, if it does? Well, you know, Lindsay, these special counsel investigations often take quite a long time. The special counsel has now only been in place for a few months. The Justice Department has been investigating these charges for over a year now. Uh, but we expect that these special counsel investigations can take many years at a time. If you remember, the Ken Starr investigation took many years. Some of the more recent special counsel investigations, uh, including uh, including of the FBI and its role um, uh, in 2016 and what, what took place there at the Justice Department, the investigation the Trump administration started, that took a while as well, um, as did the Mueller investigation. So this could go on for you know a number of years, even into the election season in 2024. And so, you know, ultimately what the special counsel will do is issue a report that will go to the attorney general, obviously still a political appointee of the current president, and he'll have to make some decisions if in fact the report is even issued by the time this administration ends. And outside of just the criminal aspect of the insurrection, how do you think the public hearings specifically have impacted public sentiment about what happened on January 6th and the threat to democracy going forward? Well, you know, Lindsay, obviously the president believes that this investigation by Congress, by this committee, uh, being seven to two Democrats and Republicans, including two Republicans who are not supporters of the president, in fact, obvious opponents of the president, uh, he believes that it actually helped him with his base and actually, you know, demonstrated to his base that he's being pursued uh, for political motives. At the same time, people on the outside have now seen a lot of the evidence uh, that the committee has gathered, which demonstrates the president knew the intentions of the crowd that had come to the Capitol that day, knew that they were armed, and nonetheless encouraged them to go to the Capitol and march on the Capitol um, and to and to essentially target the vice president of the United States, who was in the middle of those, of those events. And so uh, to the extent that it's had an impact on the president, it's hard to know whether the former president, it's hard to know whether it's been beneficial or harmful to him. Certainly with those in the middle and to the left, it's been very, very harmful to him. But to those on the right and those who support him, there are those who believe it's actually been beneficial because it's demonstrated to those uh, that he's actually being pursued politically. So hard to know net, net, Lindsay, how this plays out. Yep, and we will keep our eyes on it all. All right, Jamil Jaffer with the National Security Institute. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me.